Today we're going to be installing this Max solenoid for boost by gear um, on the Civic. Let's get started uh, putting this thing in. So before we get installing the electronic boost solenoid, aka the Mac valve, um, I did want to show you that my exhaust ended up breaking on the Civic. It got really loud. So I ended up pulling out the Harbor Freight welder, doing some welds to it, just to kind of get it back together. And it leaked a little bit, so we went ahead and threw some JB weld over the top of those. Those are some pretty hideous welds, but it'll hold it together. I'm not a pro welder, like I said, I suck at welding but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Um, but the welds are holding together perfectly fine, so here's what it sounds like now without the leak. Well, it sounds like it worked. Pretty quiet again, so. You couldn't really tell from that rev clip, but it's not leaking anymore. It was leaking pretty bad. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to go ahead and get installing this Mac valve. What's going on everybody? So today I'll be installing this Mac solenoid. This is the 12 volt model um, and I'll be showing you how to wire it up to the ECU and all of that good stuff. Link will be in the description for this. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right here I have a connector from another um, engine harness. Just I have tons of wire connectors. Just any two prong connector connect together. Um, that's how I'm going to run this one. It doesn't matter about which one's negative or positive on this, so either one of these can run to the ECU um, for the signal, and then the other one can be direct power, so a uh, 12 volt source, which I'm going to show you how to wire this directly to the ECU. Now, one of the ways is to get an old uh, connector. You're going to need to depin it because most of the A11 on the ECU side is missing. Uh, you'll want to pry this piece up right here, this white piece. Basically, just pry that up. Um, there's a proper ways of depinning. This isn't the proper way, but I'm going to show you a way that does indeed work. Um, I just grab it with the pliers like this and pull it out. Now you can damage it doing this, but. Uh, Nine times out of ten, I don't, but that's just one way of doing it. And then you'll take this and you'll pin it into the ECU side, which I'll go show you real quick. All right, so right here we have the ECU. This right here would be A, B, and D, the biggest side being A. Find that on the connector, which is right here. This is this one right here is the biggest connector. Um, so I'm going to show you real fast. Right here we have the A connector. Um, you're going to want to pop this piece up right here like that and then this is how we figure out which one goes where the far left up at the top that would be one below it would be two three four five six seven eight nine ten and that empty spot there that's eleven that's the a11 where we need to stick the piece that we pulled out of the other connector we're going to want to put this in the correct way because if not it'll screw it up kind of hard to see because I don't have a cameraman hold my camera but basically there's a little spot I'm trying to get it focused it'll be up like this where the little butt shape you know the little M is up um, you'll basically just take that pin and you'll slide it in there just like that it's all the way in now we'll lock this back down. Now that we've got that wire done for A11, we're gonna go all the way over to the very right on the same connector at the top, A25. A25 is going to be our switched 12 volt power source, which I'm just gonna tap into by splicing some of the wires. So I basically just expose some wires, which will uh, wrap around that and solder to that. And then we'll solder this one and then our wiring will run out there all right so right down here it's kind of harder to see because this is in the way um, but right back here there's a grommet on the firewall um, we're just gonna feed the wires directly through there and it'll come out at the passenger side floor pan All 
All right, so we have it ran through the firewall. We have the wire reaching all the way over by the turbo, which is where it needs to go. Um, we can tuck it in there afterwards. We just need to get it connected to the ECU, and then we can worry about tucking all that later. Um, so we're gonna go in and get it connected to the ECU. All right, so here's the two wires that we fed through the firewall. Just comes right above the uh, carpet on the passenger side floor pan. And we're just going to solder these in. Remember that the orientation of the wires doesn't matter. I know I'm repeating myself, but sometimes you have to. So it's soldered up. So now we can electrical tape this, put this all back up, and then focus on the outside. All right, so I have a perfect place to mount the solenoid. Basically, I was just thinking, drill two holes right there. It's close to the turbo and the wastegate. Just notice that there's already two holes, so I wouldn't even need to drill any holes, and they line up perfectly. So I technically don't even have to do anything but just bolt them up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. All right, so I went to Walmart and I ended up getting these um, machine screws. They fit perfectly inside of these holes on the Mac solenoid. So that's what I'm gonna use for that. And they came with little nuts, so it'll work. All right, so now we have the wiring connector here, which I'm basically just gonna connect like this. And now it's officially wired in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide these wires, um, just zip tie it up out of the way, and it should be good to go. All right, now we go ahead and we remove the lines right here, which run to the wastegate, and from the vacuum source down there, which comes right off of the turbo. So the part that comes right off of the turbo, which typically is on the turbo or on the pipe right after the turbo, that line will run into the one on that side. Um, so the other one will come out of here and go directly to the wastegate's top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. I got it all set up. This is how it's supposed to go um, from either the turbo or you know right there. It's supposed to have a T-piece that goes to the one. So that would be the inlet on the boost solenoid. And then it tees off and goes to the bottom of the wastegate. Now the exit of the boost solenoid, which would be two, comes out and goes to the top of the wastegate. Um, and then we've got it wired in. Everything's tucked and ran behind there, wired in at the ECU. So now all we have to do is go to the ECU tune um, in Honda and adjust the settings, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow Michael to do it, the guy who tunes my car, because he knows way more about that than I do. Um, I can get some tuning done, but when it comes to boost by gear and stuff like that, I have no idea what I'm doing. All right, so Michael is adjusting some of the settings for the boost by gear or the uh, Max solenoid. He's in the boost control options in Honda. Uh, we've already had the um, gear ratio set. He's going to go ahead and do some stuff, so I'll just be quiet and we can watch what's happening. Because I have no idea on this. I'm here, I'm testing it. And you can see here it says quick spool. So that's gonna be cool whenever we get to do that because this thing doesn't spool very fast with this big turbo. kind of following along with what he's doing. All right, so what he wants me to do is he's got it at 10% uh, duty cycle. So he wants me to go and get on it, data log the session, um, see where I sit, and then up it in five to 10% increments at a time until I get where I need to be. 
he said sometimes 15 to 20 percent could only result in one to two psi so it just depends how this solenoid setup and how my setup is liking it so we're gonna go out and do some pools real quick <laughs> adjusted everything so I had it on min maximum boost at 0% duty normally open um, he says to not do that to run it at maximum boost at 100% duty cycle that way we've got these percentages here on fixed duty cycle and basically what he did to make my turbo spool up faster is below I think 12 pounds it just stays shut and then starts opening at 12 so that I can peak right around 14 so basically he said the only thing I need to adjust when I want to adjust some stuff are these columns here from 6500 right here all the way all three of these columns on the end adjust that for my percentage um, lower or higher depending on if I want lower boost or higher boost but see how it says 100% duty cycle that means it's shut. It's fully shut until right here on these last three columns. That's when it starts opening up. I spool way faster and I hit my maximum boost setting. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to go do one more rip. Um, he adjusted my timing a little bit more and uh, adjusted some fuel and stuff like that so that it can spool even quicker than what it was. So I'm going to data log run this session and then uh, when we get back I'll explain some things. So after that last run, we pushed 16.4 pounds of boost at 98 miles an hour. Um, we had air fuel ratio of 1130, which is pretty good. And it was pulling really hard, as you can see all the way through there. Each gear would spike up more because of the boost by gear. So 16 pounds of boost, guys. It's working pretty good. Really happy with it. We got the connector over there. You can kind of see it. It's zip tied out of the way, it won't fall down. Um, but yeah, pushing 16 pounds of boost, completely stock heads, completely stock bottom end, a 1.5 liter intake manifold. Man, it's pulling hard too. Uh, my tuner thinks it's right around 300 horsepower if I got a new clutch. But uh, yeah, it's pulling really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, I might throw in just another bottom end in here, just like a junkyard one. So. I can pull this one out and we're going to put the rods and pistons, the forged rods and pistons in this exact block. That way it's still a 1.6 D16Y7 block. Um, I don't want to do the D15 block. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that in another video, but um, I'll just keep this head. I'll be getting a race cam for this and non VTEC guys. It's pretty crazy. So we're going to get to the dyno soon, see exactly what she's pushing down. But that's basically it for this video. I really appreciate that you guys stuck around and watched this video to the end. If you did, definitely hit the like button and drop a comment below. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, eBay Turbo, Amazon uh, Log Manifold. I had this sitting in the uh, back room, so it's probably a cheap eBay one. Um, Amazon Intercooler Kit for 150 bucks. Everything's coming along really nice on this cheap build. Uh, Walbro 255 with 525cc injectors. I'm really happy with it. Uh, just want to give Michael another thank you, another shout out. Um, he really knows his stuff when it comes to tuning. So this wouldn't have been possible without him. So 
Uh, really thankful, really happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and get inside. It's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I've been out all night doing this stuff. Um, so definitely hit the like button and stay tuned for more content, guys, because there will definitely be more coming soon. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, God bless and stay safe.